And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Medical experts are still learning about the long-term effects of COVID-19. Some researchers say it's a reason why some people have a hard time getting good sleep at night, especially black people. So Dr. Majid, when we talk about uh, long haul COVID, first of all, explain what that is before we get into what we're now seeing as a result of research. So um, thanks for having me on your program. Long um, haul COVID essentially are the symptoms and the consequences of having a COVID infection, but the, the symptoms of the main infection have resolved. So fatigue, um, shortness of breath, um, headaches, migraines, any other symptom uh, related to uh, the initial infection that lasts a longer time once the acute infection has resolved. Now, as we know, uh, COVID, we're still learning something new about it every day. Do we know how long this long haul COVID, where people see the symptoms well after the illness is gone, how long is that lasting on average for a person? You know, I think it's a little bit too soon to say. I also think it varies from population uh, comparisons as well as the severity of the infection. I would say for the most part, with I think we're thinking it's averaging anywhere between six months to 12 months, but we have patients who have had recovery of their symptoms much sooner, and we have patients who have had post-COVID long-haul symptoms for longer periods of time. Now, recently there was a sleep conference that you attended, and new information came out about um, how long-haul COVID is affecting the sleep pattern in some people. That's correct. This was a presentation that came out of the Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Pena, who is a sleep physician in Ohio, uh, works in a post-COVID um, clinic, and she surveyed her patients with sleep questionnaires. And she found very interestingly a significant increase in sleep disturbances in these COVID long haulers, which would include fatigue as well as insomnia. And so the study also indicated that specifically it affected African Americans more, right? Or that's, is that that's correct? correct. Look, there were three risk factors for worsening symptoms, obesity, I think mood disorders, depression, but certainly what they found in the black community is that they had um, a higher chance. And I think it was a threefold increased chance of having severe sleep disturbance. Uh, which I think is the first time that's ever been reported. So what's the next step after learning that information and if a person can identify that they're having a sleep disturbance, whether severe or major, what can they do about it at this point? I think the most important thing to start off with is to make sure that um, uh, those individuals that are having sleep disturbances or issues that they maintain good sleep hygiene, that would include um, having a good sleep environment, going to bed when uh, you're only sleepy, um, leaving your bedroom if you're not um, able to fall asleep, minimizing the caffeine during the day, all of the things that you would um, uh, coach or uh, recommend uh, a patient to optimize their sleep time. Um, an important second uh, 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 path to this is if the sleep disturbances don't improve, I think it's also important to make sure that one seeks um, a specialty care to make sure that they don't have a sleep disorder um, um, or the insomnia that they're experiencing doesn't get any worse because if the insomnia is not managed appropriately and they don't have the right coaching, um, that insomnia can become chronic and can uh, become a lot more difficult to treat. All right, Dr. Rakshanda Majid, thank you for joining us here on The Factor on Sensor for this uh, valuable information, especially for the African-American community that may be viewing this as well. Awesome. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome.